Hey everybody, thank you so much for tuning into the channel. Remember to click like, share, and subscribe. Once again, thank you so much for tuning into the channel. Remember to click like, share, and subscribe. And thank you for watching. Ever notice what happens when your home is beautifully organized? You have more space, more room to breathe. At California Closets, our designers know just what questions to ask to create exactly what you want. Your personalized experience includes custom design and installation to deliver a result that truly reflects your style and needs. That's the California Closets difference. We call it practical magic. Book your free design consultation today at californiaclosets.com. When you look around your home, what makes you smile? Personal touches, beautiful light, lines, colors, things of quality that enhance your life. California Closets specializes in making space for what belongs, with richly textured finishes and quality materials that last. From the bedroom to the pantry to the mudroom, everything we do is custom designed, built, and installed by people who take pride in serving you. Think of it as practical magic. Book your free design consultation today at californiaclosets.com. Ever notice what happens when your home is beautifully organized? You have more space, more room to breathe. At California Closets, our designers know just what questions to ask to create exactly what you want. Your personalized experience includes custom design and installation to deliver a result that truly reflects your style and needs. That's the California Closets difference. We call it practical magic. Book your free design consultation today at californiaclosets.com. When you look around your home, what makes you smile? Personal touches, beautiful light, lines, colors, things of quality that enhance your life. California Closets specializes in making space for what belongs, with richly textured finishes and quality materials that last. From the bedroom to the pantry to the mudroom, everything we do is custom designed, built, and installed by people who take pride in serving you. Think of it as practical magic. Book your free design consultation today at californiaclosets.com. Ever notice what happens when your home is beautifully organized? You have more space, more room to breathe. At California Closets, our designers know just what questions to ask to create exactly what you want. Your personalized experience includes custom design and installation to deliver a result that truly reflects your style and needs. That's the California Closets difference. We call it practical magic. Book your free design consultation today at californiaclosets.com. Everybody, I'm Ed Robinson, and welcome to another exciting edition of Striving for It All. This is the program that gets you caught up on anything and everything happening around the WNBA. Coming up on this edition of the program, we have a recap of the week that was in the WNBA. Also, a look at the current league leaders and standings. And we have a look ahead to the week's upcoming games in the WNBA. And plus, we'll have a tribute to a player that is no longer here with us. That's all coming up on this edition of the program. I want to start off with my top three storylines. I want to start off with the Minnesota Lynx. The Lynx have been on a roll. In the last four games, excuse me, actually in their last five games, they've been four and one. The Lynx have been on a roll. The Minnesota Lynx, to be exact, they have won their last four out of five games. They beat Los Angeles on July the 20th. They lost to the Las Vegas Aces on July the 22nd, but they got back to their winning ways and would go on to beat the Washington Mystics on July the 26th, the New York Liberty on July the 28th, and the Connecticut Sun on July the 30th. So as I stated earlier, in the last five games that the Minnesota Lynx have played, they've won their last four out of five games. And Nafisa Collier is back to her top form. We know Nafisa, a proven champion, also multiple Olympic gold medalist, of course was on maternity leave, but now Nafisa is back with the vengeance. And this team is definitely not only playing off of her, but also Kayla McBride, 
Dorka Juhas, also Jessica Shepard. Can't forget about Lindsay Allen. She's been nice along with Rachel Bannum. And, of course, Diamond Miller, who is definitely going to be a candidate for this year's WNBA Rookie of, Rookie of the Year. And definitely she's going to give Aaliyah Boston a run for her money in this year's Rookie of the Year voting. So, again, in the last five games, the Minnesota Lynx have been red hot. They've won four out of five. And they've been red hot as we make our run down towards – the playoffs in the WNBA as we're still in the thick of things in the second half of the year. And the Lynx have really moved up in terms of their playoff contention and moving up in the WNBA standings, which we'll get to a little bit later on in the program. But big ups to the Lynx. And also big ups, as always, a great job by Cheryl Reeve. Of course, Cheryl Reeve has been the head coach of the Lynx for many decades now, and she continues to just to be the model of consistency when it comes to coaching in the WNBA. Also, Katie Smith, who's a former Lynx player, is uh, one of the assistant coaches, and Rebecca Brunson is one of the assistant coaches for the Lynx as well, as well as being a former member of the Minnesota Lynx. So certainly Minnesota, they're on a roll right now, and the sky's going to be the limit for them, and they're going to need to continue to have that push as we get towards the end of the second half of the WNBA season as we make the playoff push. My next storyline is going to be the New York Liberty. Man, the Liberty just continues to just – play with the vengeance right now currently as this show is airing they have the second best record in the WNBA with a record of 19 and 6 and these last several games have been really good for the Liberty I mean the month of July has been really awesome for them let's go back to now July the 21st a victory over the Washington Mystics they beat the Indiana Fever on July the 23rd they beat the Seattle Storm on July the 25th they beat the Atlanta Dream on July the 27th. They lost a close game to the Minnesota Lynx on July the 28th, but they would rebound to beat the Los Angeles Sparks on July the 30th. So in the last six games that the Liberty have played, they have won five out of six, only losing one game during that six-game stretch, and that's to the Minnesota Lynx. But in the six games, they've won they're, they've won five out of six, and they've been on a roll. Brianna Stewart, MVP candidate. What can you say about Stewie, right? Sabrina Ionescu, you got to mention her in the MVP race as well. Jonquel Jones doing what she does best, scoring, rebounding, giving solid defense. Courtney Vandersloot has looked really good in her first year as a member of the Liberty. And also, you got to give kudos to Bet Niza Laney as well, doing what she does best as well, getting the points in the paint, doing the dirty work. And how about Maureen Johannes? Maureen has been sensational with her three-point shooting, and certainly she has been definitely a bright spot for the New York Liberty on this winning streak that they've been, been on as of recent. And, of course, kudos to Sandy Brondello in only her second year as the head coach of the New York Liberty. Great job that they've done in such a short amount of time. And if anybody that could give the Las Vegas Aces fits, one of the few teams would be the New York Liberty along with the Connecticut Sun. But the Liberty on a roll right now, there's, hey, there's, there's no stopping their game. There's no sense of, of them slowing down anytime soon. Certainly the Liberty have their work cut out for them, and they continue to march on to the second half of the season and hopefully try to take Las Vegas and take that number one seed from them in the WNBA standings. And for my last storyline is going to be the Las Vegas Aces. I mean, what can you say about the Aces, right? The, currently the best record in the WNBA as this show is currently airing, they have a record of 23-2. and two. Everybody's been balling. We know about the Candace Parker injury. We don't know her timetable when she's going to return. It doesn't matter because no Candace, no problem. You've got Kelsey Plum. You know what she does. You know what she brings to the table, right? Also, Chelsea Gray. Hey, Chelsea Gray is like the walking buzzer beater, doing what she does best, putting up those game-winning shots, those long-range shots, Chelsea is just outstanding. Jackie Young, the quiet storm, that's what I call her, because Jackie, a floor general, doesn't say too much, but hey, you don't need her to say too much. Her talent speaks for itself. You got Kia Stokes providing the defense, doing the rebounding, doing what she does best. I mean, hey, you can't go wrong with somebody like a Kia Stokes. And, of course, Asia Wilson, right? 
the two-time WNBA League MVP, Asia, just a dynamo, doing it all, scoring, rebounding, playing defense. I mean, she is just a force to be reckoned with on both sides of the ball. And, of course, in her second year as the head coach of the Las Vegas Aces, Becky Hammond doing a, sol- a solid job, a fantastic job with the roster that she has with the Las Vegas Aces. And I mentioned about defense, also Alicia Clark. You can't forget about Alicia, right? Alicia just doing what she does best and giving defense alongside with Kia Stokes. And also Sydney Colson has been a nice addition to this team as well. So you can't sleep on the Las Vegas Aces. You can't sleep on Becky Hammond. Also, the management's done a great job for the Aces, of course, with Nikki Fargus, Natalie Williams. They've been very, very good in these uh, two years that the Aces have enjoyed this championship run. They're the defending champions, and they know they're no longer the hunter. They're the hunted, but guess what? They're bringing that dog, and they brought that energy so far during this first half of the year. Actually, in the second half of the year that they brought this dog, and hey, the first half, they brought it. In the second half of the year, they continue to bring it. So kudos to the Las Vegas Aces on this run thus far. All right, that takes care of my top three storylines. Uh, before we go to break, some news to pass along to you. Speaking of the Las Vegas Aces, guard Raquan, uh, Raquana Williams, a.k.a. Bebe, was arrested this past week in Las Vegas on domestic violence charges and strangulation charges. And as a result of that, she has been barred from participating in team activities. Again, Raquana Williams, a.k.a. Bebe, was arrested in Las Vegas on domestic violence and strangulation charges. The Las Vegas Aces have currently barred her from participating in team activities. In response to Williams' arrest, the Aces issued a statement saying that she is, quote, Precluded from participating in team activities, we condemn domestic violence of any kind. Our thoughts are with the parties involved in this situation, end quote. So, again, uh, Raquana Williams, a.k.a. Bebe, was arrested on a domestic violence charges, and the Las Vegas Aces have barred her from participating in team activities until further notice. In the meantime, All-Star Center for the Phoenix Mercury, Brittany Griner, will not travel for the team's next two games and says that she will focus on her mental health. I'll tell you one thing. It's been a roller coaster ride for Brittany since she's returned from the United States from the mishap that happened in Russia and then just the overwhelming support that she's had and, unfortunately, the underwhelming jeers that she's received since she's returned from Russia to the United States. But I'll tell you one thing. I talked about Brianna Stewart being an MVP candidate. Brittany Griner has had an amazing individual season this year. Unfortunately, the Mercury, way below 500, not having a great season. But Brittany has been one of the few spots for the Phoenix Mercury. So, again, Phoenix Mercury All-Star Center, Brittany Griner, will not travel for the team's next two games so she can focus on her mental health. And then finally, some sad news to pass along, not only to the world of the WNBA, but also women's basketball. Nikki McCray Pinson has passed away. And Nikki passed away at the young age of 51. When you think about not just women's basketball, but just basketball as a whole, one of the names that you have to mention is Nikki McCray Pinson. Nikki, of course, you know her about being on that dynamic 1996 women's United States women's summer Olympic basketball team with some great teammates. You talk about the creme de la creme in women's basketball with the likes of Elisa Leslie, Rebecca Lobo, Cheryl Swoops, Ruthie Bolton, Dawn Staley. Uh, The list goes on and on, man. Uh, Just great talent, great talent all around on that roster. And Nikki McCray was definitely a part of that squad. And certainly that was the precursor for the following year in 1997 for the WNBA. And Nikki McCray was a member of several teams during her time playing in the WNBA. She played for the Washington Mystics, also played for the Indiana Fever, and also played for the San Antonio Silver Stars, which later would move to Las Vegas to become the Las Vegas Aces. But again, sad news to pass along. Again, Nikki McCray Pinson passing away very young, uh, due to complications from cancer. She was only 51 years of age. We'll be right back. When you look around your home, what makes you smile? 
personal touches, beautiful light, lines, colors, things of quality that enhance your life. California Closets specializes in making space for what belongs with richly textured finishes and quality materials that last. From the bedroom to the pantry to the mudroom, everything we do is custom designed, built, and installed by people who take pride in serving you. Think of it as practical magic. Book your free design consultation today at californiaclosets.com. Ever notice what happens when your home is beautifully organized? You have more space, more room to breathe. At California Closets, our designers know just what questions to ask to create exactly what you want. Your personalized experience includes custom design and installation to deliver a result that truly reflects your style and needs. That's the California Closets difference. We call it practical magic. Book your free design consultation today at californiaclosets.com. There are more identity threats than you realize. Even if you monitor your credit, only a little personal info needs to leak out. Like your social security number or password. For you to become a victim. LifeLock alerts you to threats you could miss. If your identity is stolen, a dedicated U.S.-based restoration specialist will work to fix it. No one can prevent all identity theft or monitor all transactions. But everyone can save up to 25% off their first year. Go to LifeLock.com slash aware. Ever notice what happens when your home is beautifully organized? You have more space, more room to breathe. At California Closets, our designers know just what questions to ask to create exactly what you want. Your personalized experience includes custom design and installation to deliver a result that truly reflects your style and needs. That's the California Closets difference. We call it practical magic. Book your free design consultation today at californiaclosets.com. Modern life is noisy. Noise is everywhere. Excessive noise is harmful, linked to sleep deprivation, hearing loss, and heart disease. Should noise be the price we pay for progress? Actually, no. Many noise sources have quieter options. Gas-powered landscaping equipment is obsolete, with battery-powered options greatly reducing noise and air pollution. Audible car alarms are obsolete with vehicle immobilizers and GPS tracking providing silent anti-theft technologies. Quieter backup warning sounds are available and adjustable directional sounds are less intrusive. So what can you do to reduce noise levels? Talk to store and building managers about safe sound levels. Work with elected officials and the police to strengthen noise enforcement. Join Noise Free America, a coalition to promote quiet. Everybody, welcome back to the program. Now it's time to get you caught up on the week that was in the WNBA. Let's start off with action from Tuesday, July the 25th. We had the Phoenix Mercury squaring off against the Atlanta Dream. Atlanta would go on to win 78 to 65. For the Dream, we had Alicia Gray finishing with 12 points. Also, A.D. Durr finished with 12 points. Ari McDonald finished with 11 points, and Ryan Howard finished with 10 points. Once again, the final score, the Atlanta Dream, 78, the Phoenix Mercury, 65. We had the Seattle Storm going up against the New York Liberty. This was a very close game, but New York would go on to beat Seattle. Final score, 86-82. to 82. One of the top duos in the WNBA, specifically representing the New York Liberty, is Sabrina Ionescu and Brianna Stewart. Two of these ladies are definitely, in my opinion, definitely are MVP candidates this year. And certainly with the way these two have played as well as the way the Liberty have played, these have been some of the bright spots on this New York Liberty roster. Here's Brianna and Sabrina in action. Stewie picks it up, puts it in. And here comes Benajah Laney. Over to Sloot. Pass in the corner for Yonescu, who knocks it down. Baseline J for Stewie. Gets it. 
Do we? Oh, rises above Magbagor. As Dewey continues the Liberty streak and lets it rain from third. Yonescu, a deep one from the winning count. It. He's a finalist. <laughs> Two second chance opportunities from Yonescu, and now Stewie knocks down the baseball. Five to shoot. Former teammate on former teammate, and Stewie knocks it down. All right, that audio courtesy of the WNBA and ESPN3. So, again, the final score was New York 86, Seattle 82. Brianna Stewart, a.k.a. Stewie, finished with 22 points. Sabrina Ionescu had a triple-double with 12 points, 12 rebounds, and 12 assists. John Quell Jones also contributed to the victory with the double-double with 13 points, 17 rebounds. We also had Courtney Vandersloot finishing with 10 points. Maureen Johannes finished with 10 points, and we had Bet Nigel Laney stepping up with 19 points. On the losing end for Seattle, Jewel Lloyd, this year's WNBA leading scorer, she finished with 32 points. Ezie Magbogor finished with a double-double with 22 points and 12 rebounds, and Sammy Whitcomb finished with 11 points. Again, the final score was New York 86, Seattle 82. Also, we had action between the Las Vegas Aces and the Chicago Sky. Las Vegas would win 107-95. to For the Aces, Kelsey Plum scored 27 points. Chelsea Gray finished with 22 points. Jackie Young finished with 15 points. Kia Stokes, not much on the offensive side, only six points. But, hey, she contributed generously on the rebounding side. She had 17 rebounds. And Asia Wilson, another MVP candidate this year, she finished with 24 points. Again, the final score was Las Vegas 107, Chicago 95. Let's move along now to other action on that on Tuesday, July the 25th between the Connecticut Sun and the Dallas Wings. Connecticut would win a close one. 88 to 83. For the Connecticut Sun, Dewana Bonner and Tiffany Hayes, these two were explosive together. They helped in the victory with Connecticut beating Dallas. Here's Dewana and Tiffany in action. From the outside, Dewana Bonner. Trigger, no. Loose ball goes to Bonner. Tiffany Hayes, the Wiley veteran, knocks down the three. Picks Howard. That opens it up. Bonner, no. Allen, the rebound. Here's Hayes on the drive. Satu didn't want a foul. But Bonner, if you leave her open oh, like that, my. especially, I think her best threes come in transition. Here's Bonner. Crystal Dangerfield will let her go, and Bonner goes into double digits. Bonner, the scoop, and gets the bounce. Hayes and Dangerfield going at it. That's going to be a foul and the basket. The foul will be on Crystal Dangerfield. Hayes. Inside, nice pass, Hayes, who goes down hard again. Bonner goes inside. For the lead, no. Burton fights for it. Hayes launches the three. Got it! Bonner being guarded by Howard. Let's it fly. Got the three! My goodness! Three to shoot. Bonner, the up and under. And she's got it! All right, that audio courtesy of the WNBA and ESPN3. So, again, the final score was Connecticut 88, Dallas 83. For Connecticut, Dewana Bonner finished with 32 points. Tiffany Hayes finished with 28 points. And Alyssa Thomas contributed with 10 rebounds. On the losing end for the Dallas Wings, Arike Ogunbowale, again, I mentioned MVP candidates. You can add her name to the list as well. She finished with 25 points. Satu Sabali had a double-double with 16 points and 13 rebounds. And Tierra McCowan had a double-double with 21 points and 15 rebounds. Again, the final score was Connecticut 88, Dallas 83. And then finally, we had action between the Indiana Fever and the Los Angeles Sparks. Very close game, but the Sparks would hold on to win. 79 to 78. The duo of Neka Agwomake and Jordan Canada came up big in this game. And especially towards the end of the game, where a big shot was nailed for the Sparks. 
to help the fever, to, excuse me, for the Sparks to help L.A. beat the fever. And certainly his NECA and Jordan in action and also the thrilling end to an exciting game. A steal here by Canada. The pitch ahead of Rumake against Wheeler hanging off the wall. Here's NECA. Left of the lane, touch the shot, but she gets it to fall. And there's Canada looking to push. JC in the lane. Oh, what a pass to NECA. The reverse is good. They can. Oh, yes, she can. Put it on a platter for NECA. Canada, five on the shot clock, straight away three. Obumake, back to Canada, short side of three, quickly the other way to Canada, with four, with three, the last throw, throwing Canada with the three, Neca makes the move, Neca with the triple, she went to her bread, Canada has a drive there on the baseline and able to get the layup, working against her old teammate in Obumake, Shoots it over from the baseline. Long rebound picked up by Cook. Ahead of the pack is Nagu McKay. Power dribble layup. No, she missed it. Gets her own rebound and puts it back in. Looking for Stevens underneath. Tough catch. Stevenson blocked by the rim. Ball's loose. Necker gets it. And finishes with the left. Inbounded to Canada. With nine. Jay Can going to take her time with it. Canada steps into a three. He's got it. to inbound it. Always dangerous to inbound Always inbounder. dangerous. Coming Mitchell. right back to us. To Boston. Right back to Mitchell. Has space. The three. Well, it's over. It's over. Boston wins. Oh, definitely exciting right there. And the voice that you heard right there is Tiffany Green doing the play-by-play -play for that game between Los Angeles and Indiana. And that audio is courtesy of the WNBA and NBA TV. So, again, the final score was Los Angeles 79, Indiana 78. What a dynamic performance by Neka Ogwumake finishing with 30 points. Jordan Canada, outstanding as well. She had a double-double with 20 points and 10 assists. As a race, Stevens contributed in the victory. She scored 15 points. On the losing end for Indiana, Kelsey Mitchell had 19 points. Victoria Vivians finished with 17 points. And Erica Wheeler finished with 15 points. Again, the final score, Los Angeles 79, Indiana 78. We move along now to action from Wednesday, July the 26th, where we had the Washington Mystics going up against the Minnesota Lynx. Very close game, but in the end, Minnesota would hold on to win, 97-92. to These two names I mentioned earlier in the program, Nafisa Collier and Diamond Miller. Nafisa, definitely a candidate for the league MVP this year. I mean, what a comeback season that she's enjoying thus far. And Diamond Miller, you got to put her name in the running for this year's Rookie of the Year consideration. I mean, her and Aaliyah Boston can be one and two for this year's Rookie of the Year award. In the meantime, here's Nafisa and Diamond in action against the Washington Mystics. Here's Diamond Miller, the crossover, the step through, the shot, and the make. Diamond Miller with a tough two for Minnesota. There's Miller with the and one. There. A lot of contact on the play. Result is a Nafisa Collier jump shot. The Lynx have to figure out how to keep Psych out of the paint. She's getting through that first line of defense. Stolen away by Collier. All the way in. C with the steal and the two. Collier will take the rebound. It's going to be those little things. The mistiming just getting her legs back. Simon Miller lines up the three pointer. Collier hits another one. Collier brings it up herself, elbow, jumper, rolls in to feed to Collier. No, oh, she tried to sneak it into Juhas. Collier got it back, picks up the dribble, gets the basket. And now Carlton, Miller, looking at Collier in the lane, but Miller doesn't need it because she just hit the shot. Miller, spin, shoot, hit.
All right, that audio courtesy of the WNBA and NBA TV. So, again, the final score was Minnesota 97, Washington 92. So, for the Lynx, Nafisa Collier had a double-double with 24 points and 11 rebounds. Diamond Miller contributed with 21 points. Kayla McBride would score 15 points. On the losing end for the Mystics, Natasha Cloud finished with 24 points. Brittany Seitz had 17 points. And Maisha Hines-Allen finished with 12 points. Again, the final score, Minnesota 97, Washington 92. Let's move ahead to action now from Thursday, July the 27th. The Los Angeles Sparks went up against the Indiana Fever, and the Sparks handled their business beating the Fever 81-68. to for the, for the Sparks, excuse me, Neka Ogwumake finished with 25 points, and Jordan Canada finished with 21 points. Again, the final score was Los Angeles 81, Indiana 68. We had the Atlanta Dream going up against the New York Liberty. The Liberty would go on to beat Atlanta 95-84. to For New York, Brianna Stewart had a double-double with 33 points and 12 rebounds. Jonquel Jones had a double-double with 19 points and 13 rebounds. Ben Nigel Laney finished with 14 points, and Sabrina Ionescu finished with 12 points. Again, the final score, New York 95, Atlanta 84. We move along now to action from Friday, July the 28th, where we had the Minnesota Lynx going up against the New York Liberty. Minnesota would win a close one, 88-83. to Diamond Miller, hey, again, a candidate for this year's Rookie of the Year award, and also Kayla McKayla has had a very nice year for the Lynx thus far as the Lynx try to make their way in the second half of the year and try to make that playoff push. And I'll tell you one thing, Kayla, Kayla and Diamond were outstanding in the victory against the Liberty. Here they are in action. Kayla McBride, if she heats up. Miller working on Stewie, and she gets that one to fall. Nice move there. Tend to shoot here for Miller. Miller working on Yonescu, goes right by her, lays it in with the left. Oh, Kayla McBride with a long one. Knee leech is there, leads for McBride, puts it up and puts it in. Miller, step back three. That one brought rain. The rookie with the response. She's been able to play. Oh, I'm sorry, Jules. What an off-balance connection there by McBride. Oh, the ball movement gets interrupted by Kayla McBride. Maybe a little too cute at the top of the key. Kayla McBride creates space and knocks it down. You cannot give her that much room. Kayla McBride is just in the zone right now. Three Notre Dame players on the floor right now, and one of them just hit that three. It's McBride once again. Miller with ice in her veins, connects on the three. Put it out to Laney for three. No good, and the long rebound comes to McBride. She pushes the pace, lays it up, and puts it in. All right, that audio courtesy of the WNBA and ION. So, again, the final score, Minnesota 88, New York 83. For the Lynx, Kayla McBride finished with 26 points. Diamond Miller finished with 22 points. And a double-double by Dorka Juhas with 13 points and 10 rebounds. On the losing end for the New York Liberty, Sabrina Ionescu finished with 31 points. Brianna Stewart finished with 23 points. Bet Nigel Laney finished with 11 points. And Jonquel Jones finished with 11 rebounds. Again, the final score, Minnesota 88, New York 83. Also, another action, we had the Seattle Storm beat the Chicago Sky 83-74. to Gabby Williams and Ezie Magbagor both scored 17 points. Jewel Lloyd had 15 points. Sammy Wickham had a double-double with 12 points and 10 rebounds. Again, the final score, Seattle 83, Chicago 74. And the Dallas Wings were going to beat the Washington Mystics 90 to 62. For the Wings, Satu Sabali had a triple-double with 14 points, 11 rebounds, 10 assists. Tiara McCowan had 18 points. Also, Arike Ogunbowale would finish with 18 points. Awakwea finished with 12 points. And Maddie Zegras finished with 10 points. Again, the final score, Dallas 90, Washington 62. And then from we also had action from Sunday, July the 30th, where we had 
the Minnesota Lynx going up against the Connecticut Sun. The Lynx would win a close one, 87 to 83. For the Lynx, Kayla McBride finished with 19 points. Lindsay Allen finished with 16 points. Jessica Shepard had a double double with 12 points and 14 rebounds. Ariel Powers finished with 14 points, and Dorka Yuhas finished with 11 points. On the losing end for the Connecticut Sun, Dewana Bonner finished with 31 points. Alyssa Thomas had a triple double with 17 points, 14 rebounds, and 11 assists. And DJ Carrington finished with 11 points. Again, the final score: Minnesota 87, Connecticut 83. Let's move along now to other games that we had. The Chicago Sky beat the Phoenix Mercury 104-85. to For the Sky, Kalia Copper finished with 24 points. Marina Mabry finished with 23 points. Robin Parks had 14 points. Courtney Williams had handled her business, scoring 19 points. And Elena Smith finished with 10 points. On the losing end for the Mercury, Diana Taurasi finished with 24 points. Michaela Onyanwere finished with 18 points. And Megan Gustafson finished with 17 points. So again, the final score was Chicago 104, Phoenix 85. The New York Liberty took care of the Los Angeles Sparks, 87 to 79. For the Liberty, Brianna Stewart had 25 points. Maureen Johannes finished with 15 points. Also, we had uh, Jonquel Jones had a double-double, scoring 13 points to go along with 13 rebounds. And Sabrina Ionescu finished with 14 points. Again, the final score, New York 87, Los Angeles 79. The Seattle Storm took care of the Indiana Fever, 85 to 62. For the Storm, Jewel Lloyd was sensational. She scored 26 points. Jordan Horston had 15 points, and Gabby Williams finished with 14 points. Again, the final score, Seattle 85, Indiana 62. The Las Vegas Aces continue to be dominant. The Aces took care of the Dallas Wings. Final score, 104 to 91. For the Aces, Kelsey Plum, 28 points. Chelsea Gray, 27 points. Asia Wilson, 22 points. And also, Alicia Gray was also in double figures with 12 points. Again, the final score, Las Vegas 104, Dallas 91. And then we had the Atlanta Dream beat the Washington Mystics in a close game, 80 to 73. One of my favorite players in the WNBA, I think one of the most underrated players in the league, Alicia Gray. Alicia scored 27 points in the victory over the Mystics. Here's Alicia in action. Gray getting in on the three-point train. Gray, stop, pop. I'm pushing the pace. Gray steps into it. Ball movement. Leads to the triple. Gray winning plays as Atlanta. Oh, board. Alicia Gray. All right, that audio courtesy of the WNBA and ESPN3. So, again, the final score, Atlanta 80, Washington 73. Alicia Gray finished with 27 points. Mia Coffey finished with 16 points. And Ryan Howard and Cheyenne Parker both scored 11 points. On the losing end for the Mystics, Brittany Sykes scored 25 points. Tiana Hawkins had a double-double with 17 points and 10 rebounds. Again, the final score was Atlanta 80, Washington 73. And that takes care of the week that was in the WNBA. A lot of exciting games, and certainly that's what it happens. That's what happens in the second half of the year as we make our way down the stretch for the playoffs. You know, games get more intense. The rivalries get intense. The play heats up a bit, so it's never a dull moment in the W. All right, just want to give you a couple of awards, well, actually an award to pass along to you for the Player of the Week. Starting off for the week of July the 25th, the Eastern Conference Player of the Week Award goes to Jonquel Jones from the New York Liberty. And for the Western Conference, for the second time this year, Asia Wilson is named the Western Conference Player of the Week Award winner representing the Las Vegas Aces. So again, congratulations to the Eastern Conference Player of the Week Award winner, Jonquel Jones from the New York Liberty, and the Western Conference Player of the Week Award winner for the second time this year representing the Las Vegas Aces, Asia Wilson. Those are the Player of the Week Award winners for the week of July the 25th. 
All right, let's move along now to the current league leaders in the W. Let's start off with points per game. The current leading scorer in the WNBA is Jewel Lloyd from the Seattle Storm. She's averaging 24 points per game. Coming in at number two is Brianna Stewart from the New York Liberty. She's averaging 23 points per game. Coming in at number three is Arike Ogunbowale from the Dallas Wings. Coming in at fourth is Nafisa Collier from the Minnesota Lynx. And in fifth is Asia Wilson from the Las Vegas Aces. Next category is rebounds per game. Coming in at number one is Melissa Smith from the Indiana Fever. She's averaging nine rebounds per game. Coming in at number two is Alyssa Thomas from the Connecticut Sun. At number three, Asia Wilson from the Las Vegas Aces. And tied for fourth, Satu Sabali from the Dallas Wings and Neka Ogwumake from the Los Angeles Sparks. The next category that we have is assists per game. Tied for first, we have Kel Courtney Vandersloot from the New York Liberty and Alyssa Thomas from the Connecticut Sun. They're both averaging eight assists per game. Coming in in third place is Chelsea Gray from the Las Vegas Aces. She's averaging close to seven assists per game. And then tied for fourth is Natasha Cloud from the Washington Mystics and Courtney Williams from the Chicago Sky. They're both averaging six assists per game. Next category is going to be blocks. Coming in at number one, Asia Wilson from the Las Vegas Aces. She's averaging over two blocks per game. Coming in at number two is Ezzy Magbagor from the Seattle Storm. At number three is Elizabeth Williams from the Chicago Sky. At number four is Brittany Griner from the Phoenix Mercury. And at number five is Elena Smith from the Chicago Sky. The next category that we have is field goal percentage. Coming in at number one is Aaliyah Boston from the Indiana Fever. She's shooting 59% from the field. Coming in at number two is Brittany Griner from the Phoenix Mercury. Coming in at number three is Brianna Jones from the Connecticut Sun. And then tied for fourth is Asia Wilson from the Las Vegas Aces and Jonquel Jones from the New York Liberty. Next category is free throw percentage. At number one, Elena Deladon from the Washington Mystics. She's shooting 96% from the free throw line. At number two, Carly Samuelson from the Los Angeles Sparks. She's shooting 94% from the free throw line. At number two, Jordan Canada, her teammate from the Los Angeles Sparks. Coming in at number four is Ariel Atkins from the Washington Mystics. And at number five is Chelsea Gray from the Las Vegas Aces. Next category is three-point percentage. At number one, Jackie Young from the Las Vegas Aces. She's shooting 48% from three-point range. At number two, Carly Samuelson from the Los Angeles Sparks. She's shooting 45%. At number three, Taisha Harris from the Connecticut Sun. At number four is Chelsea Gray from the Las Vegas Aces. And at number five, Sabrina Ionescu from the New York Liberty. Next category that we have is steals. At number one, Brittany Sykes from the Washington Mystics. She's averaging over two steals per game. At number two, Alyssa Thomas from the Connecticut Sun. At number three, Neka Agwumake from the Los Angeles Sparks. And then tied for fourth is Jordan Canada from the Los Angeles Sparks and Arike Ogunbowale from the Dallas Wings. And then the last category that we have is minutes played. Currently at number one, Arike Ogunbowale from the Dallas Wings. She's averaging 37 minutes per game. At number two is Alyssa Thomas from the Connecticut Sun. She's averaging 36 minutes per game. At number three, Jewel Lloyd from the Seattle Storm. She's averaging 35 minutes per game. At number four, Brianna Stewart from the New York Liberty. She's averaging 34 minutes a game. And at number five is Nafisa Collier from the Minnesota Lynx. She's averaging 33 minutes a game. And that takes care of the current league leaders in the WNBA. All right, now for a current look at the standings. Of course, starting off, at number one, of course, the Las Vegas Aces. They have the best record in the WNBA with a record of 23-2. and two. Coming in at number two, the New York Liberty. They have a record of 19-6. and six. At number three, the Connecticut Sun. They have a record of 18-7. and seven. Tied for fourth, the Atlanta Dream and the Dallas Wings. They both have a record of 14-11. and 11. Coming in in sixth place are the Minnesota Lynx with a record of 13 and 13. Coming in in seventh place are the Washington Mystics with a record of 12 and 13. Coming in in eighth are the Chicago Sky with a record of 10 and 15. Coming in in ninth 
of the Los Angeles Sparks with a record of 9-16. and 16. Coming in in 10th are the Phoenix Mercury with a record of 6-18. and 18. And in tied for last place are the Indiana Fever and the Seattle Storm. They both have a record of 6-19. and 19. So those are your current standings in the WNBA. So certainly it's going to be basically a fight to the finish between Las Vegas, New York, and Connecticut for those first three, for those top three spots in the WNBA standings. We're in the meat of things in the second half of the year, and as we make our way towards the stretch going making that playoff push these three teams are definitely going to be jockeying for position it's never going to be a dull moment and currently those three teams that i mentioned las vegas new york and connecticut they're all going to be jockeying for position i tell you one thing it's never going to be a dull moment all of those teams have been coached very well with las vegas being coached by becky hammond also you've got new york with sandy brondello and of course the connecticut sun with stephanie white Those three ladies have done a great job this season, and certainly those three are going to be candidates for the Coach of the Year Award. All right, when we come back from the break, we'll give you a look ahead to the week's upcoming games in the WNBA. You stay tuned. I'm Matt Robinson, and you're listening to Striving for It All. our children and families, we do everything we can to play it safe. Did you know? The single best way to help safeguard from flu and reduce the spread of the flu virus is through annual vaccination. Families Fighting Flu is devoted to protecting your family against this serious and potentially deadly disease. Our commitment comes from our organization's personal experiences. I lost my five-year-old healthy son, Joseph, to the flu. The flu poses a serious risk to everyone from the young to the elderly. But we know that flu vaccines can save lives. Increasing the number of flu vaccinations by just 5% could prevent nearly 800,000 illnesses and 10,000 hospitalizations. Help keep your family and your community safe. Together, we can fight the flu. Get yourself and your family vaccinated this year and every year. For facts and tools, visit familiesfightingflu.org. everybody welcome back to the program before we close out this week's edition of the program let's give you a look ahead to the upcoming games for the week in the WNBA let's start off with action on Tuesday August 1st we have the Minnesota Lynx going up against the Connecticut Sun we also have the Phoenix Mercury going up against the Indiana Fever the Atlanta Dream going up against the Las Vegas Aces and the New York Liberty will go up against the Los Angeles Sparks On Wednesday, August the 2nd, we have the Dallas Wings going up against the Seattle Storm. On Thursday, August the 3rd, we have the Atlanta Dream going up against the Phoenix Mercury. On Friday, August the 4th, we have the Connecticut Sun going up against the Indiana Fever. The Los Angeles Sparks will square off against the Washington Mystics. The Chicago Sky will square off against the Dallas Wings. And the New York Liberty will square off against the Minnesota Lynx. On Saturday, August the 5th, we have the Seattle Storm going up against the Phoenix Mercury. And on Sunday, August the 6th, we have the Indiana Fever going up against the Atlanta Dream, followed by the Los Angeles Sparks going up against the Washington Mystics. The New York Liberty will square off against the Las Vegas Aces, and the Chicago Sky will square off against the Dallas Wings. So we're in the heart of things in the second half of the WNBA season as play gets intense and Tempers start flaring up a little bit as all of the teams, well, the teams that are in playoff contention try to move up in the standings and make that playoff push. So certainly keep your eyes and your ears open to currently what's happening in the W. Until next time, everybody, I'm Matt Robinson. Thank you so much once again for tuning in to another exciting edition of Striving for It All. And until next time, everybody, have a great one and so long.
Hey everybody, thank you so much for tuning into the channel. Remember to click like, share, and subscribe. Once again, thank you so much for tuning into the channel. Remember to click like, share, and subscribe. And thank you for watching.